The early part of the 20th century was dominated by the great silent Western stars, and the title King of the Cowboys drifted between the gritty, pseudo-realistic William S. Hart and the flamboyant, heroic Tom Mix. The advent of sound changed everything, though, putting a great many Western stars out of work. It was no longer enough to look the part of the dashing Western star. You had to sound like one, too. But audiences weren't interested in gruff and gravelly Western types. No, the 1930s saw the rise in popularity of the singing cowboys, who combined the straightforward heroism and flashy costumes of Tom Mix with plentiful, catchy tunes that were, of course, ideal for the new sound motion pictures. And the first of the singing cowboys was Gene Autry. So long, now it's time that I said audio. Hi, I'm movie man Eric Houston. When Gene Autry came to films, he was already a popular singer. Born Orvin Grover Autry in 1907, the young singer was working at a telegraph office, entertaining himself by singing and playing the guitar. A customer heard him and suggested Autry switch professions. Gene signed a deal with Columbia Records in 1922 and started out his career not as a cowboy, but as a hillbilly singer with songs like Do Right Daddy Blues before transitioning to country and hits like That Silver-Haired Daddy of Mine, and of course, Back in the Saddle Again. I'm back in the saddle again Out where a friend is a friend Where the longhorn cattle feed on the lowly Jimson weed I'm back in the saddle again Riding the reins once more Toting my old 44 Where you sleep out every night And the only law is right Back in the saddle again Whoopie tie I oh Rocking to and fro Back in the saddle again In all, Autry made some 640 recordings, including the popular Christmas hits Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Santa Claus is Coming to Town, and Here Comes Santa Claus, which Autry wrote himself. Here comes Santa Claus, here comes Santa Claus, right down Santa Claus Lane. He's got a bag that's filled with toys for boys and girls again. His records have sold more than 100 million copies, and he has more than a dozen gold and platinum records to his name, including the first record ever certified gold. Autry's first film was In Old Santa Fe, where he was part of a quartet of singing cowboys. He next took the starring role in the 12-part serial, The Phantom Empire. Gene Autry, a surface man in Uranium. Welcome. How do you like our world? Well, <laughs> I think the dampness and dead air of your land is more suited to rats than moles. Yeah? You interest me. Go on. My business is singing. I sing about horses and sunshine and the plains. <laughs> well, how could anybody sing about those things here? Kind of makes you feel good to sing, you know. Autry, his horse champion, and his sidekick, Smiley Burnett, appeared in 44 low-budget films throughout the 1940s. He was Republic Studios' biggest star and one of the top grossing Western stars of the 30s, 40s, and 50s. And every hour is a day. You have a beautiful voice. No one else seems to think so. That's because they're not educated to that type of music. Sing something they like and they'll eat it up. Well, what do they like? Something like in the heart of the west? Yes. Do you know that? Oh, yes, but... Then go out there and sing it for him. Yeah. 
From 1943 to 1945, though, Autry took a break from motion pictures to fight in World War II as a member of the U.S. Air Force. Ironically, his time away saw his popularity slip and allowed another singing cowboy to usurp his place as king of the singing cowboys. She's a fair senorita and a charm to eat. She's the apple of the eye of every fellow. And everyone calls her Bonita because her name is Anna Donna Della Costa Bella Donna de Dolores. De la Cardino. She's a tropical number when she dances the rumba to the singing of a fiddle or a cello. And everyone calls her Bonita because her name is Anna Donna de la Costa Bella Donna de Dolores. De la Casino. She'll do the bolero on any sombrero and follow it up with the samba. And when she winks her eye, everybody cries, Caramba! Roy Rogers' early career was inexorably tied to Autry's. The young singer, whose birth name was Leonard Sly, had been recording with a group called the Sons of the Pioneers when he began appearing in small roles for Republic, including alongside Autry. Okay. I'll work my way down to the car. You fellas go stampede the cab. Okay. <laughs> It was when Autry began demanding more money for his work in 1938 that Sly had his first real shot at fame. You see, while Republic Studios agreed to pay Autry more money, they balanced the books by using him less often. The studio then launched a competition to find a new singing cowboy who could cheaply star in movies that would fill in the gaps in Republic's annual catalog. Sly won the contest, and Republic, inspired by comedian Will Rogers, gave him the moniker Roy Rogers. Whenever stars drift over the prairie, thoughts of you drift into my heart. Throughout the dark of night, I seem to hold you tight. And you promise that we'll never part. Rogers' popularity we'll grew steadily, and when Autry left to serve in World War II, Rogers stayed home and continued making pictures. In this relative vacuum, Rogers' popularity outstripped Autry's, and Rogers became not only the nation's favorite singing cowboy, but the number one top-grossing Western star from 1942 to 1954. A savvy businessman, Rogers early on negotiated to keep all of the rights for his name, voice, and face, allowing him to make money off a slew of merchandise that included dolls, novels, and comic books. It's estimated that only Walt Disney had more pieces of merchandise bearing his name. Like Autry, Rogers typically played himself in movies and was supported by a number of familiar sidekicks, including his dog Bullet, his horse, Trigger, the great Gabby Hayes, and even his real-life wife, Dale Evans, whom he met while filming The Cowboy and the Senorita. I haven't seen Chip yet. Oh, she's fixing up for her entrance. You know, little girls take their birthdays pretty seriously, Roy. Really. Little? I thought 16 was a ripe old age. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you're right, but since the old lady isn't downstairs, do you mind being pressed in the service? No. The Cowboy and the Senorita, boys. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to meet Roy Rogers, a very good friend of Chip's and of mine, with a very special song for all of you. The cowboy and the senorita met in Rosarita one night not so long ago. The cowboy and the senorita made the night much sweeter with words like I love you so. 
He said life on the range is such a lonely life. Both Autry and Rogers would remain popular throughout the rest of their lives, especially once they both made the transition to television, granting them a regular spot in the home lives of children across America. Next time, we'll take a look at one of Autry and Rogers' cowboy contemporaries, the high in the saddle Randolph Scott. Until then, stay safe, watch movies.